Yo, what's up guys, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this question, we got another example dealing with symmetry. So we got a state is each of these functions here odd, even, or neither. So notice these are more complex functions that we're working with, but the same process is gonna apply. So what we wanna check always is what's f of negative x gonna equal? And if we notice that f of negative x equals f of x, the original function, we know it's going to be even. If it's going to equal negative f of x, then it's odd. And then if it's neither of those, then it's neither. So starting with this first function, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in negative x for all the x's here. So we'll have negative x up top over negative x squared minus 4, like that. And so what we would end up with is negative x at the top still. And then negative x squared, that's going to end up being positive x squared. And then we're going to have minus 4. Right? Whenever you got negative x to the power of an even exponent, it's always just going to equal that. Um, it's always going to be x to the power of that even exponent. Because you're going to end up having that negative 1 to the power of an even exponent, which is always going to end up being positive 1. But if that exponent is odd, so like if we have negative x to the power of 3, then that's going to end up being negative 1 to the power of 3, x to the power of 3. This is still going to stay negative. Okay, so just as a general rule, I mentioned this a bunch of times, but I'll keep mentioning it. Negative x to the power of an even exponent, it's just going to end up being x to the power of an even exponent but negative x to the power of an odd exponent is going to be negative x to the power of that odd exponent. So that rule is always going to hold. So going back to this, okay, so we got negative x over x squared minus 4. Notice that we can take out this negative. Let's put it in front of the function like that. And notice that x over x squared minus 4, that's just f of x. So we'd end up with negative f of x here. So we just showed f of negative x equals negative f of x, which means the function is odd. Right? So, yeah, the answer to number 1 is that this here is an odd function. Now, the way this looks graphically... We're going to go into more detail in the rational functions chapter on how to graph something like this, but just to show you how it looks, we're going to have two vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and positive 2, and then um, it's going to look like this. All right. Kind of a weird looking graph like that. But nevertheless, notice that if we take one half of the graph, so this is the y-axis here. Let's say we take this portion of the graph, which is this and that. If a function is odd, what does that mean? That when we take one half of the graph on one side of the y-axis and we reflect it in the y-axis and the x-axis, we should end up with the other portion. So notice that if we, uh, you know what, I'm going to do it over here because it's kind of tougher to see with everything going on there. If I take just this portion and I reflect it in the y-axis, what would I end up with? I would end up with this and then this over here would end up being there. That's if I reflect it in the y. And then if I take it and reflect it in the x, I would end up with that, and then this would be down here. Okay, kind of tough to show, but my point is if you take just this half, reflect it in the y-axis, then reflect it in the x-axis, you would end up with this portion right here. So you can see it visually as well that uh, this function is going to be odd. Okay, what about the second function? We got f of x equals x squared over x squared minus 4. So notice the only thing that changed is that we have this x squared 
up top. So what's f of negative x going to be? Well, we're going to have negative x squared over negative x squared minus 4. And then we know, as I've stated, that's going to be x squared. That's going to be x squared. Notice that we end up with the original function, f of x. So f of negative x equals f of x. So notice that even with rational functions, meaning that if you have variables in the denominator, if all of the exponents are even, and then you have some kind of constant, then it's going to be an even function. It's the same thing as I mentioned with polynomials. With, um, with a mix of odd and even exponents in a rational function, sometimes it's a little tougher to figure out whether it's odd or even or neither, right? So if you remember that with polynomials, if all of the exponents were odd, for example, like that, then that function is going to be odd. If we had a mix like x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 4, an odd exponent and an even exponent, we know that this was going to be neither. But this property, quote unquote, doesn't necessarily apply with, um, with rational functions, where if you have a mix of an odd exponent, 1, and an even exponent, 2, it's not necessarily going to be neither. Notice that we got odd there. But if you have all even exponents and then constants, then that function is going to end up being even, right? So I don't know if it's useful to like remember all of these rules in your head. Personally, I don't try to remember them. I just try to make sure that I get my algebra skills down so I can just show it, right? I can see whether f of negative x would be f of x or negative f of x and just prove it that way. Right, so anyway, this function here ends up being even. Now, if we graph it, again, we're going to show in steps how to graph these kinds of functions in the rational functions chapter. But the way this looks here is that there's vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and positive 2. There's also going to be a horizontal asymptote at 1 and it's gonna look like this. And then like that. Right, so notice that if we take th this half here and reflect it, we would end up with this half. Or if we take this half reflected over the y-axis, we'd end up with that half. So you can visually see it's symmetric about the y-axis. And so that function ends up being even.